Before we begin, I wanted to let you know I have a bonus for you at the end of the second segment. A few days ago, someone sent me a book. I receive a lot of books every week. But what got my attention about this book is that the original version was banned and classified by the CIA. It was re-released decades later, sanitized and redacted for public consumption. You may or may not know what I'm referring to. So at the end of this interview, I have some audio you may want to listen to that discusses the history of this interesting book. Psst. One more thing. I also included a link to the original or redacted book, but you have to wait until the end of the interview to get the key. Let me know what you think of it and if it shakes your current paradigm. Treasonous policies have been put in place by the Department of Justice, the FBI, law enforcement, fusion centers to legally permit covert use of radiation weapons, a neuro weapons in vendetta, surveillance, non-consensual experimentation, electronic warfare, field weapons, testing on citizens. Are we in the middle of a cold civil war? Do we still have a Fourth Amendment? And is the United States being run by an unconstitutional secret government? You are listening to Veritas. If this is your first time, welcome home. To listen to tonight's full interview and all of our material, join the Veritas family and click on the subscribe button at veritasradio.com. You can make your purchase with a credit card, PayPal, cash, check, money order, and even cryptocurrency. We are now accepting Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Ethereum. Don't forget to visit the Veritas store for Focused Life Force Energy, MMS, CBD Pure Hemp Oil, Divinia Water, Pure Organic Sulfur, Flash Drives with all our Sanitas and Veritas Seasons, and other great products. And if you want to get in touch with Mel, want to be a guest on this radio program, have a guest suggestion, or have feedback, just click on the contact button of our website at veritasradio.com. And if you're listening on YouTube, like, subscribe, and share it. And click the bell to be notified when new interviews are available. And now, here's your host, Mel Fabregas. Karen Stewart worked for the National Security Agency as a foreign language intelligence analyst from 1982 until 2010, when she was illegitimately fired two years before she could have retired, because she dared ask the IG to investigate white her work credit for a six-month series of top-secret reports she authored leading up to the Iraqi invasion was credited to another woman, who she eventually discovered was a honeypot. The work was credited to a younger, less experienced, less educated, less competent female analyst who had nothing to do with the reports, but was sexually servicing several NSA managers. She was then given a rare double promotion intended for Stewart. To cover the sexual exploits, Stewart was ordered secretly vilified for a non-existent infraction so as to be set up to be fired after being slandered, libeled, stalked, harassed by low-level security goons, as well as an apparent secret civilian army of brown shirts called InfraGuard, who are trained and run by fusion centers, who serve to neutralize real patriots. When Stewart started speaking out on various alternative news venues, she discovered that many Americans, not just whistleblowers, were being targeted to bloat the watch list. They are written up with false dossiers submitted to the FISA courts by a main fusion center, targeted, then viciously slandered, libeled, secretly declared without rights, then made prey to the predatory and bogus Homeland Security Department and affiliated FBI and fusion centers, who then used them for weapons testing and high-tech non-consensual implant experimentation all under the pretext of being terrorists. She has, with many others, been trying to wake the public and our leadership to these FISA abuse crimes by deep state traitors. Karen Stewart does not have a book or a website. She is simply speaking her truth. Hello, Karen, and welcome to Veritas. Thank you for joining me. Yes, thank you so much for this opportunity. I appreciate it. It's my pleasure. And I have to thank you. I want to tell the audience that we did this very, very short notice. You came to me a couple of days ago. We had to bring you on because this information has to come out as soon as possible. 
I also want to disclose that we are under heavy censorship, shadow banning by the multiple tech companies. So we'll have to watch what we say on segment one. But I promise you that on segment two, we are going to have to take our gloves off. So, Karen, let's begin with your story. When did you join the NSA? All right. In 1982, I joined to use my foreign language capability. I was very interested in foreign languages and wanted to translate for a living. And I went to the National Security Agency. They did a thorough background check on me. They did a thorough psychological evaluation, financial, et cetera, et cetera, trying to make sure this isn't a crook, this isn't a crazy person, et cetera, et cetera. I passed all those with flying colors and they hired me. And I was an intelligence analyst for 28 years until they fired me. Now, what happened was at toward the end of my um, career, I found that uh, there was a honeypot operation going on at NSA. And I tried to get the inspector general to investigate it. And when I did, I was attacked. So uh, to give you a little information as to how I found that out, I had done a six-month award-winning uh, report series that was estimated by the Pentagon and upper NSA management as having saved at least 2,000 American lives, military lives. And um, my boss decided that he would credit it to a woman he was sleeping with. And she got a rare double promotion on my work, which I didn't find out about until maybe a year or so later. And uh, when I asked what in the world was going on, I went to um, the inspector general and had all kinds of things befall me. I had some kind of secret accusation made against me. Then it was uh, demanded that I go for a polygraph. And I had always had no problem whatsoever with polygraphs. So I went to this one and the man screamed at me just before the polygraph, which of course makes your adrenaline uh, shoot up. And of course I flunked that polygraph. I had asked, I said, you know, you screamed at me before the test. And so I'd rather come back another day. And frankly, I'd rather have another polygraph examiner because I don't know what's wrong with you. And he refused. And he said, basically, take the polygraph or we'll involve the FBI and they'll come get you. So I really thought that was a, a bizarre bluff, but I didn't want to take a chance. So I went ahead and took it. I flunked it uh, because my adrenaline was just um, off, you know, off the roof. So um, I came back and took another couple polygraphs and was able to pass, and they weren't able to take any action against me, which I thought was bizarre, you know, to report something and then have things fabricated against you that had no basis in reality whatsoever. So I changed from one office to another, and then I found that once I had gone to the IG, that things really got out of hand, uh, and uh, NSA security basically said, drop the inspector general request, or we're going to say that you're mentally ill and fire you. So I knew I wasn't and had never been. And so I knew what they were doing was illegal, but they started a slander and uh, libel campaign against me. And then they got low uh, level security people to stalk and harass me just about 24 seven at NSA. And then I found they were doing it off campus as well, which uh, frankly, I'll do a little segue here. It, uh, it ties into what the fusion centers are doing to people. So do remember that, and I'll get back to it. Before um, you say that, can you please define honeypot? Because I know what it is, but a lot of people are hearing that, even with the Epstein case, and many people just don't know what that means. Okay, that's fine. Um, what it is is somebody is using a woman to um, sleep her way through various people in order to sexually blackmail them. So at NSA, if you, you know, you hold a top secret uh, clearance, and if you are caught doing something like having an affair, NSA security is supposed to follow protocol and say, look, Mr. Jones, you've been having an affair with your secretary. You've got two choices. You can either resign and leave because you cannot have a clearance because now you're, uh, you can be blackmailed, or we can call in your wife and tell her exactly what you were doing, and nobody can blackmail you for doing it. So that is when NSA operates properly but they were not operating properly. They were basically um, trying to destroy the messenger, so to speak. So um, I endured probably stalking harassment from about 2006 to 2009, and they got frustrated because what they wanted me to do was say, oh, people are following me around. 
And so I was just ignoring them because I knew that something was wrong and that they knew they were lying. So I was trying to ignore them as much as possible. So in 2009, though, they uh, poisoned a family pet, a beautiful Newfoundland, poisoned him with neurotoxin and killed him. And they started having the NSA goons uh, follow me to and from work, but um, trying to organize what I call um, aggressive driving attacks, scaring the hell out of me and um, endangering everybody around me. So at that point in time, when it got really physically dangerous, I went to my management and said, this is what's going on. I'd appreciate it if somebody would just get some common sense, you know, and stop whatever it is they're doing. And so they were told by security that if I ever said anything to report me, as soon as I, as soon as they heard me say that, they went to security. Security said, oh, you're imagining things, so we're going to strip you of your top secret clearance. Uh, they put me in a travel position, which is very menial, and they said, well, we're going to decide your fate because we think you're mentally ill. And I said, well, you know, security has for over 20 years said if you – ever see anybody following you or something, some kind of strange activity, it could be foreign agents trying to uh, basically get in touch with you and trying to turn you or try to blackmail you or try to kidnap you, so tell us. So they went against their own protocol yet again to not investigate license plates and drawings that I'd made of people, you know. So um, at that point in time, they were trying to fabricate a reason to, to fire me because they wanted me to shut up about the honeypot situation. So um, while I was at the travel bureau that worked for um, NSA, I started seeing the people who had been harassing me uh, on the road reporting to the security building next door. And uh, they were driving, of course, their own cars. So I started to get their license plates to identify them to police. I went to the police. The police contacted NSA. And NSA came to me and said, basically, we think you're not only crazy, but you're dangerous. So we're going to put you on admin leave. Well, they put me on admin leave. And I found out within a week, I had people who were neighbors and other civilians harassing me very similarly. And I had no idea how that was possible. But it turns out that NSA works with fusion centers. And if you don't know what a fusion center is, after 9-11, it was decided by the government uh, that 9-11 had happened because the feds and the local police don't talk to each other. They don't share information. So they created fusion centers all over the United States, one per state at least, sometimes two, sometimes three, depending on the size of the state and the population. So what NSA had done was fabricate lies against me, go to the local fusion center, and then they went to their civilian volunteers called InfraGuard. Now, these people are not exactly volunteers, but because they do get paid under the table. They get gift cards and services and products. You know, if they do this or that, they may get a new washing machine or they may get a gift card to their favorite department store for $100 or something. In other words, there's, so they are there's snitches. Paying them. Yeah, they're snitches. They're snitches. And ironically, they call, <laughs> the fusion centers call them. Um, human intelligence or human, which of course has a different meaning in the real intelligence community. Um, but uh, anyway, they imagine themselves patriots and, and professionals, but they're neighbors who are snitches and willing to slit your tires if they're told to. They're just harassers. They're low, low life harassers is what they are. Um, and I always say that what they've done with this InfraGuard situation is identify and call out sociopaths among us who are more than happy to harass and um, trample your constitutional rights for a gift card. So these are incredibly immoral people and gullible and immoral. And there's but no recourse anyway, against, these people, against these people if they're found to do something illegal? Well, we're hoping at, at a certain point in time that there will be. You know, the, um, uh, this is a, this is a um, program that is very similar to the East German communist uh, regime where they had snitches and they called this program Zerzetzung, which means uh, Zerzetzen is a verb meaning to destroy from every level, to absolutely annihilate. So they called this type of psychological harassment Zerzetzung, uh, and this is what the people are doing. They're stalking, harassing people, and if you report it to uh, the police, the police are told, oh, that's just a paranoid person. We have a, a mass hysteria of 
paranoid people, all over the United States just ignore them. Well, some of the police are naive, and they do, and some of them are, uh, know very well that this is a program and that they get rewarded for doing what they're told because the fusion centers essentially are, are who the police and the, and the uh, uh, sheriff's departments are reporting to now. The fusion centers have militarized almost every uh, police department and sheriff's department, and they tell them what to do. Well, they, they have this in every repressive regime. I mean, they had it during the Batista time in Cuba, the Cochivatos, and now they're in Cuba, and on every street they have somebody who's looking at every street, and they report to the authorities. Absolutely. And I think under Obama, he had imagined 100 million snitches to watch the other 2.5 million citizens. Now, I'm not sure... I was going to say, I'm not sure how many they have, but you cannot go from any town of any size to any other one and not be harassed. So it is a vast network. It is absolutely a vast network. And, you know, you've got a lot of people making money in what used to be a terrible economy. So they were very interested in such easy, well-paying work. Very interesting. And where's that money coming from? Taxpayers. Taxpayers through black budgets? Is that, is that appointed by, the, by Congress? I mean, do we know that we're using that money for this reason? There, there, <laughs> there are a lot of programs where Congress is told it's none of your business. This is a um, intelligence community or this is Homeland Security, and they don't account for it. So this is not part of the jurisdiction of the Appropriations Committee? Well, that I don't know. That I don't know. But uh, it's, it's money that is totally unaccounted for, and I have seen articles before that say the fusion centers themselves are notorious for not accounting for the money that is thrown at them. Well, let's, let's go back in time. Can you just give us a synopsis and how things have progressed to the worst? I think, it's, yes, it is a progression because um, there are, are indications from people who have been hit with these psychotronic weapons and uh, directed energy weapons that this has been going on for decades. I've spoken to people who claim to have been targeted for 20, 30 years. And uh, we know that the directed energy weapons have been in, uh, basically they've been researched and tested and developed for the last 60 years, okay? So there's a whole type of, of weapon that the vast majority of people are not familiar with, and they had never heard of them until the article in 2017 concerning the American diplomats in Cuba yep. being hit with a, a invisible unknown weapon, which they called Sonic. And uh, several doctors familiar with that type of thing have said, no, that's not Sonic, that's microwave weapons. And they do make a, a very high-pitched whining sound that a lot of people cannot hear because it's on the very edge of human hearing. So it looks like those people were hit with microwave. And then in 2018, another set of diplomats in China was hit with, again, the same types of weapons. And they had brain damage done to them. They had hearing damage, vision damage, brain damage. And uh, I think it was a doctor, there was a doctor in, a uh, neurologist in Pennsylvania, University of Pennsylvania, who coined the phrase um, immaculate concussion because he examined these diplomats and said, oh, dear God, they do have brain damage from being hit with weapons, and yet there is no damage on the outside of their head. So that's why he and his team called it immaculate Con, um, concussion. So these are horrifically dangerous weapons. And I will tell you, they can pinpoint one person out of a crowd, or they can drop the whole crowd. They're, they're, are I, they I considered non lethal weapons? These are in the same family as non lethal weapons. Mm -hmm. Non lethal weapons, according to David Galbots, who is an acquaintance and he was a security man who guarded testing of these weapons on a military facility years ago. He said, these are not non-lethal weapons. They were developed to be lethal. What they're doing is they're saying, okay, we're going to take these weapons and we're going to hit people in a crowd we don't like, and maybe protesters. We're going to hit them with this weapon for maybe three to five minutes. It'll make them sick. It'll make them, uh, it'll give them a lot of pain. They'll run away. But if you take that same weapon and aim it at somebody 24-7, you will kill them. You can give them uh, bleeding in the brain, stroke, heart damage, heart attack, uh, cancer. Uh, various uh, abnormalities can be developed in the person by hitting them with these weapons 
at a low uh, power, but constantly. So it makes a perfect tool for assassinating people you find inconvenient. Of and course. I do believe that's been done. Plausible deniability. Let's go back to 2017 for a moment. Of course, everybody knows I'm no fan of the Cuban regime, but they... The United States blamed the Cuban regime, and I believe, I'm not sure if they blamed China. What transpired then? Who is to blame about the diplomats who suffered these attacks? You know, my first instinct is that the CIA did it, and they did it after Trump was elected president because they did not want him to normalize or better relationships between China and Cuba. That's my instinct. I have no proof of that, but that's my opinion. Well, it seemed to me, of course, Trump being the Republican Party and, of course, the majority of Cubans who live in Florida are against any normalization. Uh, I would have thought that uh, it was done for the... Well, you're right. You're right. It was done so that we did not normalize, blame Cuba and say, hey, listen, we're not going to open up and we're going to lift the embargo either. So same with China, you're saying? I think so. I think the CIA has a reason. Now, you know, CIA runs amok in Cuba. Now, um, whether that is the same in China, I wouldn't really say that, but there, there must be some reason that they didn't want uh, us to normalize relationships with China. Now, they do run amok also in North Korea, or they did, so that might be related, it might not. But I Brent. think it was subterfuge on the part of the CIA to hit our own people with that. Now, there is a, there is a secret arms race. You know, people are just not aware of it. I mean, the Chinese, the Russians, the Iranians, and the United States are in an arm race to uh, to develop the worst uh, directed energy weapons. And that's horrific because these things destroy all life. And there is no inhibition to use them because if you uh, hit a town with it, then you wipe out all the people and all the, the you know birds and animals and things. But you can move your people right in afterwards. You have not destroyed the infrastructure. I'm going to go out on a limb and say this here, and you correct me if I'm wrong. But when I see the CIA and the powers that it has, something tells me that they, ever since the Kennedy assassination, they've been in control of the United States. I mean, look at John Brennan, a proven communist. He's also a Muslim. Why would we put a communist in charge of our most important intelligence agency? Well, in my opinion, uh, Obama was a Trojan horse, and he was meant to take down the United States, because you look at people like George Soros and the people he serves, because he is something of an errand boy, even though he's a billionaire, he is serving an upper elite above him. Uh, he said in 2010 that the only thing standing in the way of a new world order, a one world government, was the United States, and we had to be taken down. So Obama, I think, was a Trojan horse, and he was here to undermine our military, destroy our economy, et cetera, et cetera. And again, my opinion. It's your so opinion of mine, by the way. I've been saying this okay. for, for years, that the United States is the last bastion of freedom, and we are the last block towards a, a new world order. How close are we to a new world order, Karen? Um, I think it would have been a done deal under Hillary, and I think right now we've got Trump, and we need to, if people are a praying people, pray for him, because he is the last bump before before we go into that direction. He's the, he's the pushback, okay? He can get a, a hold of this. You've got to put him in again at 2020, and he's got to groom somebody for the next eight years. This is a war, and this is the war for our very survival, and it's a cold, cowardly civil war that is full of deception and subterfuge. And look, I know people, people wake up. I know people out there who think, oh, Mel, come on, all these presidents are selected. They're not selected. I'm with you. When I look at Clinton and the Bushes and, and Obama, it's all the same cabal. But yeah, really, I, agree. I think I think that Trump was an accident that they did not expect. They didn't expect him to win. And now that he's no. there, he's making changes. And can he go so far as to get a JFK haircut? Don't, don't you think he has to walk a fine line sometimes? Uh, I think he does, because you've got a lot of people in the Republican Party who are more so New World Order people. So he's got to ferret out who is with him and who is against us. You know, um, and I think, you know, the, the meme that um, that you see very often 
um, that shows him and it says that, you know, they're not attacking me, they're attacking you. I'm just in the way. So I think he, his election, uh, they expected to walk away with certain uh, states because of a, uh, uh, because of voting fraud that they had well organized for decades. You know, and then he won despite their attempt to steal the election. So they're apoplectic at this time because they don't know what to do. He's interrupted their timeline. Um, they expected Hillary to basically uh, end us. And I think that's why they had all the FEMA camps and things like that ready to go. And uh, he's interrupted this and they're insane with frustration. McCain, but, I mean, they're- R- Romney. Oh, yeah. Do you think they're part of the, well, McCain, some people say that he was, I'm not going to go there. Uh, Yes, and I'm going to say that the illusion of Republican and Democrat is not, um, uh, just because someone claims to be one or the other doesn't really mean they are. You're looking at globalist or patriot, and that's the distinction you have to make. Okay, very good. And when it comes to the next election, do you think Hillary might run again? I have a some somebody wrote to me the other day with a hypothesis or a theory, and I'd like to share it with you. But what's your take on the possibility of Hillary running again? Well, I personally am hoping she's arrested before then. I mean, look at, at what Trump has done is try to put together a net whereby he can uh, get rid of these people with no uh, tricks up their sleeves. I mean, if he tries to prosecute them um, with the law. Um, you're going to have years and years of appeals and things like that. Now, he retooled the uh, manual for courts martial to say that since, uh, and, and based on these, these reasons, now since uh, for, uh, after th- three days after 9-11, we were declared to be in a state of war, which we have never been undeclared from. Right. So we are still in a state of war, which is highly unusual because they're really not uh, re-voting and re authorizing it the way they should. So that's questionable, but it it still is technically we're in a state of war. Um, Now, when he came into office and and he discovered the human trafficking outrage, I mean, it's just out of out of control, then he declared us in December 2017 to be in a state of emergency. So when a country is in a state of war and a state of emergency like that and or and somebody commits serious crimes, they can be arrested by military and given military tribunals that will be wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. It'll be over in, in no time, no appeals, um, exit this door where we're going to execute you. I mean, this is something, we've got such massive treason in this country. You know, people jumped on the criminal cabal bandwagon, and they were promised to, you know, like in Orwell's um, uh, story, he, he talks about the pigs being more equal. They were promised to be more equal than the people they were oppressing, and they jumped on that bandwagon. So we've got people in all, at all levels of government serving the cabal and squelching anybody who tries to use their civil, human, or constitutional rights. So I mean, we were a hair away from everything being lost had Trump not been elected. Now, it's not going to be easy for him. We still, again, we need to cover him in prayer and do other practical things to support him, you know. So this is our, this is our cold civil war. People have got to become involved. They've got to become aware that if they just go to the baseball game and take their kids back and forth and don't pay attention, that they, you know, they may be designated uh, as undesirable and taken off to a FEMA camp, you know, if the the other people get in charge again, if they take control again. Is the so reason they, why we're like not said, seeing indictments, is it because we don't have enough judges out there that will rule in our favor and see these people go to jail finally? And this is why Trump is appointing a lot of conservative judges and they're waiting for that to finally be finished before they make the next move? Your take on that? It's it's a 4D chess game. He is, you know, people said, why hasn't he stopped this already? I said, think of the logistics, because he's got to make sure the laws are in place in order for him to handle this type of serious treason, this type of serious conspiracy. Where do you put these people? He had to go into prison reform and say, okay, this person who smoked marijuana 15 years ago needs to get out. We need the space. You know, um, and also he retooled Gitmo. He put, poured millions 
into Gitmo to make it a permanent long-term facility because they envisioned a lot of people going there for the rest of their lives and they needed geriatric care. All right, he's, he's retooled or um, refurbished Gitmo and um, Diego Garcia, which is in the middle of the Indian Ocean. It's a, a, a prison as well. Um, and then there is a third one that's an atoll, I believe, in the Pacific, but I don't know its name. So he's had to do a lot behind the scenes to make sure that they're prepared when they do go out and arrest people and charge them with treason. Uh, and it's, it needs to stick. It doesn't need to be um, under a judge who was Obama appointed and will let it drag out for 50 years. Um, and I know that Trump has, the last time I checked, he replaced 50, I believe, federal judges because the I, other ones were not upholding the Constitution. I did not know that Diego Garcia was also turned into a prison. And I don't know, not to just doubt my fellow British friends, because I love you, you know that. But there's something that tells me that the the Crown in the, the UK is under the cabal, full-blown. And having Diego Garcia, that's part of the British Empire, isn't it? I'd have to check on that, but uh, I, I thought we had claim to it, but uh, I will have to double check that. No, we use it, but it's out. part of the uh, British Indian Ocean territory. Yes, yes. So, I mean, I, there are other people who have investigated the Crown uh, involvement with this, and uh, there's Dr. Catherine Horton who claims that, and she does good research that um, basically all of the intelligence communities report to the Crown, you know, all five eyes which Five Eyes means New Zealand, Australia, Canada, the United States, UK, um, and uh, all English-speaking uh, countries. So there's been some, uh, I, I know this gets into uh, a topic that's deeper than I fully understand it, so I'm only going to touch on it, but this gets into the fact that um, the intelligence communities, they say that they are owned by the Crown, and so they're all working in concert to take away our freedoms and to do these false flags. And I will tell you, when I was at NSA and came back two days after 9-11, there was a man there I started to pass in the hall. He was crying and he had two or three women comforting him. And um, I thought, poor man, he's lost a family member or a friend in 9-11. And um, as I started to pass by him, he, he started to say these phrases over and over again. He said, no one had to die. We had all the information we needed to warn. We could have saved all those people. No one had to die. And I stood and I was just utterly in shock. And he was talking, he made it clear that they had the ability to report on what was being planned for the um, Twin Towers and the other targets. And they were told by NSA management, which was General Michael Hayden and Deputy Director Bill Black Jr., to shut the hell up, because if they warned anybody about 9-11, um, that he would be basically prosecuted and, and put in prison. And so the team that knew about it had uncovered um, the plot, was told to be quiet or else. So just like 1941, a few weeks before December the 7th, Pearl Harbor, right. they knew in Washington, and they did not tell the people in, in Hawaii. Is that more or less what happened here? No, not to mention the project for new American century. We needed a new catalyst for war. Well, yes. I mean, I, I had read about um, Pearl Harbor, and they their <laughs> their awful concern was that the American people were not ready for war and needed something to spark their interest, and so they allowed so many naval people to be murdered, and that was horrible enough. But this was to engender a police state, to engender a non-ending war on terrorism and take away our rights to, quote-unquote, protect us. Do you think that we are now on a Fourth Reich? I mean, Hitler had the Reichstag fire. We had 9-11. He had the Enabling Act. We have the Patriot Act. And I could continue going on and on and on. I think that's a good assessment because there seem to be ties with people who are uh, enamored with that. And so they are using the same guidelines and the same template. And folks, don't confuse Democrats with with the Republicans in this regard. This was done by the Bush and the Clintons and all the people behind them. They're the deep state. I mean, who do you think is really in charge of the United States, Karen? Well, right now, it's a criminal cabal that uh, Trump and others, and I would say military intelligence, uh, supposedly came to Trump and said, look, we can either uh, 
basically help you run for president and, and you can help us get rid of these people legitimately or we'll have to stage a coup in order to save the, save the United States. And uh, so he agreed to be the, um, the, the person to, to enable that. You know, because the, the military, the military intelligence knew everything that was going on, all the deals, all the dirty deals, uh, the plans to eradicate uh, a good portion of the population who wasn't on board with this. You know, constitutionalists, um, Christians, et cetera, et cetera, are two large groups that I'm sure they would have gone after. And you see that uh, veterans are severely mistreated. They're afraid of veterans because they know how to fight war. And there's been some speculation that a lot of veterans who are committing suicide are being subjected to electronic devices that basically can change the brainwave to reflect deep and severe depression. And then you tell me how many of the um, veterans are committing suicide. Oh, gosh, it's, uh, it's unbelievable what they're doing to our, our men and women. But I have to ask you this. Somebody told me that the, one of the reasons why they're doing that is because a lot of these young people that came from these wars, Iraq, Afghanistan. And I like to discuss the Afghanistan papers, if you've read them, but all these people that came back, I mean, they were still young. And the health care would be enormous to take care of them psychologically, physically. And this is why they're being, quote unquote, terminated to avoid the financial burden. Have you heard that? I've heard things like that. And I believe that is part and parcel of some of this, indeed. The Afghanistan papers... Horrible. They're just absolutely horrible. I, I just can't believe that these people are treated this way. The Afghanistan papers, have you looked into that at all? And I don't mean to mix all this stuff, but you, you're somebody with so much experience that I'd like to just discuss certain things and, and wonder what you have to say about them. Well, I'm afraid I can't help you with that because I have not delved into that. I've been um, really working uh, almost 24-7 on the issue of targeted individuals, people who have been falsely accused in order to just get fodder for the watch list. So I have been eating, sleeping, drinking that for the last several years. So I'm afraid I have not had a chance to look into the Afghanistan papers. I'll just summarize I it apologize. for people who, who wonder what that is. The Washington Post, of all things, believe it or not, came up with a, a story that's very veritable. And it's basically those of you who thought that Afghanistan was another Vietnam, indeed it was. Generals knew from the beginning that it was an unwinnable war and we were going to lose thousands of people. And that's exactly what happened. If we thought we'll never make the same mistake as Vietnam, well, we did it again. But in this time, it's been, what, uh, 18 years? The longest war in U.S. history? Yeah, it's horrible. Now, let's go to your area of expertise, the directed energy weapons and I'm not I'm not you're not talking about the weapons that might have been used during 9/11 that dustified the towers you're talking about more neuro weapons right well um they are one in the same but they are categorized now they're they have they have done studies that showed that the um, weight of the twin towers was not it did not reflect a seismic footprint that it should have when it fell and right. that uh, a large portion of the buildings were actually made into dust. And so that's only a type of directed energy weapon or thermite bomb that could have done that. Now, directed energy weapons, a lot of the time when you talk about that, you're talking about war grade and uh, huge, huge directed energy weapons, things that you put on a plane, things that you put on a Humvee, things that you put on a battleship. But what they have and we may want to call them directed energy devices. They have anti-personnel uh, directed energy devices. Now, in Afghanistan, um, they would use them if they had a whole building of um, insurgents or the freedom fighters, you know, um, that they wanted to get out of the building without sending in their people and losing them in a room-to-room -room fight. They would turn these on them, and the people would evacuate the building, um, having bleeding from the ears, nose, and sometimes eyes. So that's how vicious the, even the anti-personnel devices can be. And so these are more so what are being used on um, innocent American citizens to test them out at lower uh, levels of power and longer exposure. You have no idea how many people write to me on a weekly basis, Karen. And for years, I apologize to those of you who have written me for years. Sometimes I used to ignore them. 
because I used to think, well, they just need psychological help. But the amount of people has increased so much in the past few years, I don't ignore them anymore because I've done enough radio programs about this subject that now I can see that this is happening. And the question is, why? I mean, some of these people are regular, normal people. Some of them have, have been sexually attacked when they were young by priests. And apparently they do this to just say, oh, they're crazy, so that they're completely out of the, can we call it, society? So they lose their constitutional rights by saying that they're not capable? Uh, yes. I mean, it's, uh, they're using the psychological uh, false attack in order to keep them from getting help from the police which is questionable to, be, to begin with, but also to keep them from getting help from family and friends because they write them off as crazy. And then they say, oh, the more people they get, the more they're going to the, oh, it's mass hysteria. Well, mass hysteria does not work like that. You do not have somebody telling you the very same story who is a bricklayer in uh, San Francisco and a, let's say, Coast Guard captain in Delaware and a housewife in Texas and a neuroscientist in, you know, Minnesota, and they're black, white, yellow, Hispanic, all ages, all education levels. That is impossible for that to be a mass delusion. And But that's what they're, they're talking about. You know, anytime somebody says that, they say, oh, mass delusion. You know, no, it doesn't work that way. That's are impossible. these people guinea pigs, or are they really targeted, and if so, for what reason? You know, at both. Because there are various reasons. One, uh, me, I obviously was a whistleblower that they did not want to speak out. And they also target journalists and other people who are getting to the truth or asking inconvenient questions. Um, but that is for revenge and uh, that's for revenge purposes. That's to neutralize somebody who knows something that they're afraid of them sharing. But there are also people who are absolutely, totally random and I will say there are multiple purposes for targeting people through the Fusion Center. And that is to, you know, basically um, strip them of their constitutional, civil, and human rights. But what they're doing not only is revenge and weapons testing, but they also are engaged in uh, covert chipping of certain people in order to give laboratories, medical laboratories, and weapons people a way to control a person or torture them from afar. You know, you can go in for a, uh, go into a dentist and have an implant put in the tooth that you thought was being filled because it had a cavity. Um, you can go in for an appendectomy and um, come out with a torture network that the Pentagon has designed and what wants to test you on it. And you go back to the doctor and you say, you know, something's wrong with this arm and you get an x-ray. And if you happen to see that you've got speckles, you know, dots and things like that in the x-ray, and you ask them about that, they say, oh, it's just, you know, that's um, uh, just an abnormal MRI. And it turns out, no, those are chips because you've been chipped and you are being remotely tortured in order to test out a torture device or and which is to control you and other people, or you're being uh, used as a guinea pig to take these medical devices and deconstruct you in a certain way as to mimic a disease that they want to see how better to treat so they can make money off of treating people born with certain deficiencies or injuries um, as opposed to you, which you're healthy and you have no value to them other than a guinea pig. So they just choose you. You're a convenient person. You're in the wrong place at the wrong time. So that type of uh, attack is also um, recorded by many people. So there are very, there are a lot of different people that they're abusing uh, for different reasons, but for terrible reasons. You know, we're bio specimens. Once we're declared non-human and non, uh, you know, not citizens, no constitutional rights, civil rights, human rights, et cetera, et cetera, then we're bio specimens. And I think you remember that President Bush said in a speech, he said, if you're not with us, you're against us. If you're a terrorist, we reserve the right to kill you. Well, I'm thinking that's legalistic sleight of hand to declare people terrorists so that they can experiment on them until they kill them. They can do lethal experiments on them. It may take months or years to kill them, but they're getting something out of it. They're doing research that no human being would volunteer for, and it's a Mengele, Dr. Mengele type of research. You know, it's, it's heinous, and if people knew that uh, if they could prove it, then these people would be going to prison for the rest of their lives, if not executed. 
but they have already subverted so much of our uh, judicial system that people are turning a blind eye. You know, doctors are turning a blind eye. And I've heard from, you know, other targeted individuals that their doctors are saying, I can't help you or I may become targeted. I can't help you so it's a takeover. or I'll become targeted? Right. Interesting. Now, when it comes to the Patriot Act, we all know that. And then in 2011, Congress gave, uh, voted to give Obama a Nazi-style enabling act, the National Defense Authorization Act. So when we walk on the streets, do we think that we live in this illusion that we have all our constitutional rights available to us? Or have they been suspended ever since these, these uh, acts have been passed? I think they're suspended. And all it takes is for you to ask the wrong question. And you'll find that out. Have you gone through that yourself? Mm -hmm. Exactly. The people, people are obviously scared or they're bribed. So they're subverted or destroyed. And, and, and I don't mean to bring the Epstein situation here, but we're going to discuss this in segment two, because as you know, folks, I cannot discuss certain things anymore in segment one, because if I'm going to have this show available to the tech world out there, I don't want to be shadow banned or, or banned from it. But when it comes to the Epstein story, honeypot, it was basically, I don't want to use names, we, we'll use him later, but they were used for a reason. Do you think that not a majority, but a, a significant portion of our government CEOs have been compromised? And if so, why? I do think they have been. Um, <laughs> you've seen a lot of CEOs resign yes. in the last couple of years because of, because of Trump. And I think his people are going to them saying, we know this about you. You can go to prison or you can resign. And I think that's what's going on. Now, um, why I the CEOs? The why this? I understand the government officials, but why CEOs? Well, I think the government and the, um, you know, this is basically when you get into fascism, you've got corporations that are controlling government and telling them what to do. What mm -hmm. We need this from the government. And they're an extension of the corporation. And they're there to serve the corporation. And the corporations um, are the ones that are questionable are serving the purpose of the new world order. So they are um, offering services that look good on one hand, but maybe um, not so good on the other hand, you know, uh, TVs that are wonderful to watch, beautiful color, great depth, and they're watching you back. So I think a lot of this is being inflicted upon us through products that are designed to ultimately harm us or control us. I used to think, Karen, that we lived in a corporatocracy, but I think we live now in a technocracy where Silicon Valley is ruling with technology. Google, Facebook, all a, these. Yeah, that's an apt description, I think. You're right. It's a techno dark ages is what I've called it because we're advancing in technology and uh, regressing in humanity. In three and a half years, Look at what Trump has done. And again, I hate to hate be political because I try to not to make this show discuss politics, but I have to give credit with credit is due. If you have an individual who's suffering from impeachment and investigations every single day, even before he got elected and still is able to accomplish all these things, imagine what he would be able to do without this black cloud over him all the time. Do you think this black cloud will ever cease, even if he wins again? Or are they going to be disputing the new election and impeaching again? Well, I think that once certain people start getting arrested and exposed, that he'll be free to, to do more. But he has to line these people up just exactly right so as to not cause a civil war and to not get assassinated. But he needs these people put in prison, convicted, put in prison, and or executed um, in an ironclad way so that they don't come back and bite him in the butt, so to speak, because their, their purpose truly is to destroy the United States. And uh, this is our last chance. I have some people telling me that the next step, the left, what they want to do is create a civil war. They want to encourage people to go out there. And to be physically violent, I mean, we see Antifa, but that's nothing in comparison to what they want to do. And also what I mentioned before we take a break, what I mentioned about Hillary Clinton running again, what I've been told is that obviously Biden's not going to make it. And apparently the person who's going to 
maybe make it to a finalist. And some people talk about Michelle Obama coming in. But what I've been told is that Elizabeth Warren will be the one. And she's going to make an appearance with, guess who? Hillary Clinton as her running mate, believe it or not. That's, this is what I've been told. I hope it doesn't happen that way because we saw what happened with Bush Jr. I mean, the person in charge, correct me if I'm wrong, but the person in charge was Cheney, wasn't he? Yes, I think so too. He was so, a puppet. And um, Reagan was yeah. almost killed by yeah, somebody who was not going to yeah. be elected on his own, right? Exactly. Exactly. Well, I would say that I wonder about Hillary's health and her lack of ability to get adrenochrome. <laughs> I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, I, uh, I think the woman is very diseased and is being propped up health-wise by some very bad things. And I think with the, uh, the clamping down on that type of activity, that her health is not going to be such that she can run or even hope to win. But I'm hoping she is arrested far, beyond, far before that. When we hear of sexual trafficking and ch child trafficking, I used to think that it was just perverts and pedophiles. But after learning in the last few years about adrenochrome and how much, how much a kilo costs, then makes me wonder if all these thousands of children that disappear, it's because of this. I was going to say that I think so. And it makes me ill to think that, um, I, I mean, I'm in my 60s. I remember the first milk carton coming out saying, have you seen this child? Right. And I sat there thinking, dear God, all these years, those are not runaways. Those are kidnapped, sexually abused, murdered children. And then the adrenochrome fact. A lot of people didn't know about this in the last few years. This is another big variable to the equation. Do you think a lot of these people like Soros and David Rockefeller, who passed away a couple of years ago, who had six heart transplants, their fountain of youth, if you want to call it that way, was adrenochrome? I suspect so. And it's horrible. Why I really can think people... it's more widespread than we thought. Yes, absolutely. This is not the United States. I was going to ask you, this deep cabal, who's behind it? Some people talk about the Vatican. Some people talk about the Crown, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers. But who is really behind the scenes pulling the strings, in your opinion? Well, in my opinion, you just named the, um, the main people behind it. I mean, the Vatican has been, uh, unfortunately, child trafficking and sexually abusing children and boys usually um, for centuries, you know, the people who were like that, unfortunately, got attracted to pretending to be priests. And that's been infiltrated, unfortunately. And I'm sorry for my Catholic friends, you know, but there's a lot of fake Protestant priests and things like that who've been caught up in such things as well. So I'm not just picking on on Catholics. I, I think it's the quote unquote elite. And I say it's a shame when people have so much money that they can't think of anything else to do other than prey on their fellow human beings as opposed to helping them. I remember years ago, I was having dinner with some friends and I just found out that the largest porn company in Germany was owned by the Vatican. And I said it just in passing in a, in a dinner table with some friends. And this lady just completely attacked me. How dare you even insinuate that? And even after providing the evidence to her, she would not believe it. And I have to tell you, the society is dying. Society is dying. The, the breakup of the family and all this stuff that we see on TV and movies, it almost reminds me of Germany in the 1930s. Well, I said that in the 90s. I said we're heading into a 1930s Germany situation because there were things that were alarming to me. But it's on purpose. You destroy the family, you destroy the country. You know, you destroy uh, traditional values, you destroy the family, and you destroy society. And then you've got your independent slaves that you want to for your transhuman agenda. You can't have personal relationships, you know, and have a transhumanist agenda where you have the elite and then you only have slaves. And that's what they envision, unfortunately. Speaking of real slavery, Karen... After Benghazi, and a lot of people don't know really what happened there. I don't need to get through all of the stuff that happened, but it had to do with arms and weaponry and so on that were being trafficked in Stinger missiles and all that stuff. But mm -hmm. the bottom line after Gaddafi was murdered by Hillary, we came, we yeah. saw, he died. Ha, ha, ha. Remember that? So yeah. now, yeah. speaking of slavery, the slave trade is alive and kicking. 
And Libya is being used as a huge hub for slavery. All you need to do is just find the videos. There are videos out there showing open markets for sale, all these people. And we're part of it. We are part of it by doing that. What we did with Iraq, what we're doing with other countries, Yemen and, and so on. And what do you think made us stop with Syria? Because that was the next domino to fall. That's very interesting because Trump announced that we were going to get out and certain things were done in reaction to that faint. And he was able to identify some very bad actors. So that was a pretty good chess move. Same thing with Iran. Now that was, Yeah, that was a uh, trigger point where I think they hope to launch uh, a World War III, but, it, but he seems to have diffused it to some degree. So that may be occurring in the future again, but I'm hoping not for decades. The he economy. Seems to have that. This is the, um, the, the this is the record when it comes to never not having a recession over 10 years. Do you think this is going to continue or are they waiting for a trigger moment to crash it before the election? Well, you know, that's possible. They uh, I wouldn't put it past them to do something horrible. But I think under Trump that he's really seeking to put us on the gold standard. And uh, I think that'll take care of a lot of things. So that's his intention, as far as I know. And I think of all the people who can try it, he probably will succeed, but it's going to be slow going and he's got to keep the economy from crashing because we're, we're in a situation where, sorry about the dog, That's we're okay. in a situation where um, any country that has its value of its currency that is 40% or more borrowed is on uh, a death knell, you know, because their, their uh, currency will crash. Now, Trump knows how to, postpone and kind of work the system so that we don't have a full crash where, you know, our money drops 90% in value. I think he's going to be able to ease us over into a gold standard with some difficulty, but not a crash. I think he has the knowledge how to do that. But even if we go back to the gold standard and the Federal Reserve, which is no, not federal and has no reserves, they continue being the ones who, well, we print the money, but the ones who give us or lend us the money for interest. Why can't just Trump send the Marines, abolish the Fed, and we take it back? Well, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Sorry, somebody was at the door. Um, I think we're going to see some things. Somebody, ha you know, some people have talked about a limited uh, martial law. And so he may have to, when he starts arresting some big names, he may indeed have to, you know, get certain cities and certain areas under control, you know, with uh, with a military presence. Now, do I think it's going to be a national um, national thing? No, I don't think so. I think it'll be precaution wise, and I think um, the people who are playing some of us for fools will try to get people to riot and set cars on fire and do things like that because they'll misrepresent what's going on. But I think he has in these last, you know, two or three years, like I said, he's been setting things up logistically for a lot, a lot. And you can't just uh, go off half cocked and do certain things. You've got to take uh, precautions. And like I said, he's having military intelligence um, inform him of what has been going on and what they think needs to happen. And he's got the finesse and the knowledge and experience in certain areas that they do not. So I'm sure they have presented to him I'm just thinking, because he talks about fake news all the time, and it is true. But when you have the Smith-Mund Act from 1948 and that Obama made it even worse in 2012, how can we tell the people the truth when the media is authorized to just lie to us, propaganda, 24-7? Well, I think some of the media outlets are collapsing. They're not getting the uh, people watching them or subscribing to them. Uh, there is a new newspaper called Epic Times, which I think is very promising. And I think a lot of these newspapers are going to have to either go out of business or change, go into uh, uh, somebody else has to buy them and start putting real news out. And now, I think Trump probably has the capability of uh, starting a news outlet, you know, that, that tells people what's going on. And uh, you watch that and you watch some of the lamestream media and you're going to say, okay, wait a minute, they're very different. What's going on here? So I think the media has got to change. I don't think it's going to survive uh, two terms of Trump. It's going to go through major changes to survive and uh, or be bought by people who have an interest in telling the truth.
And by the way, those who write to me saying, by the way, Mel, do you go to Drudge? I used to go to Drudge Report. I no longer do so because I, the information I have is that he's no longer there. He sold it. And now wow. it's being used by somebody else. So if you go to Drudge right now, it's just a, a complete opposite. But they just don't want Trump to win again because they attribute a lot of the winnings because of Drudge and some other outlets out there. But things are changing. And this is why it's important to support impartial, neutral media like us here. I mean, again, I'm, I don't want to be one or the other party. I want the party of truth. I want the best for the American people and for the world. And these people who are doing this impeachment, you can see it in their eyes, in their faces. They just hate the fact that they lost and they're not going to stop using every single legal tool at their disposal to bring us down. I think you're right. And it's not that they lost. It's that they're about to be discovered, that the jig is about up and they're going to be revealed for what they are. I think that's the <laughs> it's not just being a petty loser, but their whole life is at, at stake here because they'll be revealed as crooks and traitors. And we're coming and up in a for their life. Yes. And by the way, we're coming up in a break now. You don't have a book. You don't have a website. You're just simply speaking your truth. Am I missing something or do you want to just give out any information that you'd like to do in order for people to learn more about your work, Karen? Well, um, I did a, a third interview with a woman named Ramola D. And she has a, a site called everydayconcern.net. And she allows me and other people to be guest, guest contributors. So her work is fantastic and I would advise anybody to go to her work and look at um, stories on these topics and more and then if you actually want to see something that I've done because I've written uh, three articles for the activist post and I have um, contributed to Ramola's site uh, various articles written uh, by me and or about me about what was going on and I have contributed letters um, that I've written to um, say William Barr and other leadership and I have written flyers to pass out and they're all downloadable if people care to get involved or just read some succinct flyers on what the heck's going on you know and see if they are moved to do something or even contact their representatives and say what is going on and what are you doing about it well folks when we come back, we just scratched the surface. I wanted to leave the deep stuff for part two. Because as you know, I have to be very careful how I walk this line. And again, it's not me. I hate to do this. But it's a survival mechanism that we have now. We have to just leave the rest. We're going to take our gloves off part two. This is Mel Fabregas. You're listening to Veritas. My special guest today is Karen Stewart, NSA whistleblower. Don't go anywhere. See you in the member section. Thank you for listening to the first part of this important Veritas interview. To listen to the rest and all of our material, proceed to the member section or join the Veritas family by subscribing. Click on the subscribe button at veritasradio.com. You can make your purchase with a credit card, PayPal, cash, check, money order, and even cryptocurrency. We are now accepting Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Ethereum. Don't forget to visit the Veritas store. For Focus Life Force Energy, MMS, CBD Pure Hemp Oil, Divinia Water, Pure Organic Sulfur, Flash Drives with all our Sanitas and Veritas Seasons, and other great products. And if you're listening on YouTube, like, subscribe, and share it. And click the bell to be notified when new interviews are available. Now, proceed to the members section or subscribe.